Hey, hey, everybody. I hope you're doing well. Today, we're going to take a look at the negative externalities of consumption, both the diagram and the possible government solutions to the market failure of a negative externality of consumption. And I want to just take the mystery out of it. What's happening here? The consumption of something is causing an external cost. Negatives are costs. Consumption of something is causing an external cost. So the negative externalities of consumption graph is going to start off um, looking very much like the other market failure um, externality graphs that we have in that, in that you're going to have a marginal social cost curve here, and we know that underneath this is the marginal private cost uh, curve, and we're going to have the marginal social benefit curve, which is also hiding, I like to think of it as hiding, the marginal private benefit curve. Okay, and we have a market equilibrium of P1, Q1, and this would be what the, what the market would look like for whatever product, and we're going to talk about cigarettes in this particular example, look like if there hadn't been, if there weren't some sort of externality. But as a result of the externality of consumption, and we know it's negative, then we know that something is going to shift that has to do with the old demand curve. Okay, so let's take a look at what it would look like. So a lot just happened in that graph. Now let's take a look at what exactly took place. Okay, so with, for negative externalities of consumption, there are many things that when they are consumed by individuals adversely affect third parties. Examples of this would be cigarettes and secondhand smoking, cars and air pollution, and loud music and noise pollution. The negative externalities of consumption produced here make the marginal social benefits in each case less than the marginal private benefits. The private utility is diminished by the negative utility suffered by the third party. So think about somebody smoking a cigarette across the table from you and they blow their smoke in your face, right? The private utility is diminished, right? That smoker's utility is diminished by the negative utility suffered by the third party. So people who smoke presumably enjoy some private benefits of smoking. But this will create external costs for other people. And this is commonly referred to as passive smoking or secondhand smoking. Other than the simp simple discomfort of the smell, the smell of cigarettes, the costs to others are significant and include lung cancer, bronchial illness, and asthma, and just to name but a few, right? But because there is a free market, consumers will maximize the, their, their private utility or their benefit and consume at a level where the marginal social cost meets the marginal private benefit, which is represented here by P2, Q2. They will ignore this negative externality that they are creating. And this means that they will overconsume cigarettes by smoking, right, at this quantity of Q2, as opposed to the socially optimal moment point, which would be right here at Q1, okay? So the government is going to have to get involved to try to take away this welfare loss, which is created as a result of the negative externality of production um, existing because the private, the marginal private benefit curve has moved upward along the marginal social cost curve and created a welfare loss. Okay, so let's look at how the government could get involved to eliminate uh, the negative, or as much as it possibly can, the negative externality of consumption. They have three main choices. You could say that there are more, but they could basically ban smoking. They could tax, put, put, put an indirect tax on cigarettes, or they could run a negative advertising campaign. And basically what they're trying to do is get the quantity of cigarettes consumed in the marketplace back to the Q1 level. Because that would be what would be uh, most, think of it as healthy. It would eliminate the negative externality of production. So let's take a look at the ban of cigarettes. So the government could just come out and say, okay, now government, yeah, we're the government, we're the parents of the, of the country, and we're going to ban smoking, right? And they could just make it illegal if they wanted to. But however, it's really not that simple, right? Obviously, this would have a huge impact on the tobacco industry. The government would experience decrease in tax revenue from, for government from cigarettes, right? Ta cigarettes are one of the more highly taxed products in most societies. So they would not only 
uh, affect the tobacco industry and put them out of business, which would cause unemployment. But then they would also lose tax revenue, which they're probably spending for something else. Not to mention the fact that if people can't smoke, they're going to be upset. I mean, smokers get upset when they don't have a cigarette. Imagine if they you can't smoke at all in your particular country, right? And that might affect voting. And if you're in if you're in office, of course. <laughs> um, and it's a democracy, you're going to get voted out. So a partial ban is possible. And an example of that would be a ban inside restaurants, perhaps, where you cannot um, smoke inside inside a restaurant, right? You got That's why you see people standing out on the street smoking cigarettes. They've left. There's a ban on cigarettes inside. Another thing they could do, of course, is that they could put an indirect tax on cigarettes, right? The government could impose an indirect tax on the consumption in order to reduce consumption, and this will shift the marginal social cost curve upwards to a level of MSC plus tax. We're going to look at this in a second. And this would reduce consumption to the socially efficient level of output, but will raise the price. And the government will gain significant revenue, and this may be used to correct some of the negative externalities caused by smoking. We're going to take a look at this on the graph in a second. There's a problem here, and this is interesting for your evaluation. The inelastic demand of cigarettes will actually prevent, probably, the tax from moving the from from moving the quantity demanded that great back to the Q1 level. Okay, so let's take a look at how that would look on the graph, and it'll make more sense. So what the government has decided to do, right, is tax cigarettes. And what they're hoping to do is they're trying to get the quantity, remember, as a result of the marginal private benefit being greater than the marginal social benefit, what they're trying to do is to reduce the consumption of cigarettes from Q2 back to Q1. And obviously, because we know about government intervention in tax graphs, if they tax the graph, it's going to increase cost to producers. Cost, if they tax cigarettes, it's going to increase cost to producers and result in an upward shift of the marginal social cost curve, which hopefully would move the quantity consumed in the marketplace back towards Q1 as much as possible. And of course, if they did that, you notice that this black, cir- this black triangle would be gone. Now, consumers would be paying a higher price, right, a much higher price um, for cigarettes because there would be a a price over here. But the government would have done its job in in reducing the, the, the cost, the additional, the externality, the negative externality of consumption, right, by getting the consumption of cigarettes from Q2 back to Q1. Okay. The third thing that the government could do in order, to edu- in order to reduce the negative externality of consumption of cigarettes is a negative advertising campaign, right, and educate people about it. So in order to educate about the dangers of smoking, they could shift the marginal private benefit downward. It would make people less happy to smoke, right, because they know, oh, my gosh, I'm causing cancer. Because basically what you're doing when you smoke a cigarette is you're, 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 you're consuming a known carcinogen, right? And the goal of this would be to shift the marginal private benefit curve downward. There are some problems with this because the cost might be high, right, of the advertising campaign or the education. And although taxes could pay for this, but there's also this doubt in the effectiveness, in the effectiveness of education and advertising and reducing cigarette consumption. I mean, even though you educate people, it doesn't mean, especially if you're already an addicted smoker, smokers know what they're doing. They're just addicted to nicotine. Um, I've had people tell me that it's like trying to get rid of hunger, right? That's how strong the nicotine addiction is. So how, how would that look on the graph? Well, what they're trying to do, right, is to move the marginal private benefit by, by advertising um, this curve back inward as much as they possibly can or downward, right, to get as close as they possibly can to this socially optimal point of A, which is where the original price equilibrium was. And that would reduce as much as possible the quantity consumed of cigarettes. It may reduce the price of it, but that's okay. But they would be able to eliminate some of this, some of this welfare loss as a result of um, the advertising campaign, right? Because what they're trying to do is diminish people's happiness to smoke. Because they're like, oh man, I'm not really that great. I, smoking's bad. I'm not really that happy when I smoke the cigarette. And that would move the marginal private benefit curve back downward. So that's the idea of a negative advertising campaign or an education campaign. Okay, so here's just a little review. The, both of these goals for um, getting rid of the negative externality of consumption in the marketplace results in basically trying to get the quantity demanded of cigarettes in the marketplace from Q2 back to Q1. 
The first solution that's viable, really, is the indirect tax, which would be a shift upward of the marginal social cost curve, which would result in, hopefully, in the quantity Q1 being consumed in the marketplace, thus eliminating, right, eliminating this uh, dead weight loss here or, or loss of welfare. And the other idea, solution three, that should not say indirect tax, that is a mistake. That should say a negative advertising campaign, which will result in the, the, the moving of the marginal private benefit curve back in here because people won't feel quite so happy about smoking their cigarettes anymore. Okay? So I hope you found that uh, video to be helpful. Negative externalities of consumption are confusing. You need to understand the graph and how it works first and then work towards solving it with solutions. This is ripe for a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful valuation um, answer on, uh, on a paper one question. All right. I hope you found this helpful. We'll talk to you in a bit.